Hello everyone. Welcome to the GKE Tips series. My name is Srinivas Markham. I'm a customer engineer focusing on application modernization within the Google Cloud team. Uh, in this series, we'll focus on GKE tips, insights, and best practices uh, that we have kind of learned over the years. Uh, in this specific chapter, we will focus on how do we secure access to GKE private cluster. So let's start off with what is a GKE private cluster? GKE private cluster allows you to set up a cluster in an isolated mode with restricted access. So as you can look in this picture, you have a customer project with your VPC network where you host the worker nodes and the master node which runs the GKE control plane runs in a Google managed product project with its own special VPC and we restrict the access to both the worker nodes as well as to the master nodes. There are three kinds of access options when you want to access the private cluster. The first one is the most restricted mode where you have only a private IP for the masters. And in this particular scenario, the master is accessible only from the customer VPC and the master is not accessible either from any other VPC or from the public IP address. And the master obviously is peered you know, to the workers and that is how we are able to reach the master using the customer VPC. In the second scenario, where we have a public endpoint enabled authorized networks, this is, I would say, a slightly restrict, less restricted mode when compared to this particular option. In this case, the master has a private IP and a public IP, and the access is allowed only from authorized networks we set it up. And the third one is the public endpoint enabled mode, which is, I would say, the least restrictive mode from a private cluster perspective. In this particular case, the master has private and a public IP, and as long as we have connectivity to the master, we will be able to connect to it. But in all these scenarios, just you know, keep in mind that the workers nodes as only the private. Let's talk about the different ways in which we can access the Kubernetes master, right? The first option is through the Bastion host. Here, let's say we have a client mission, and this client mission could be present in you know, the GCP or it could be outside GCP as, as well. And there is a Bastion host that is set up in the same VPC as your customer VPC where you created your Kubernetes cluster. The first step would be to access your Bastion using SSH and we're going to use identity aware proxy. So this is a step where we can access the Bastion using SSH and the identity aware proxy. Once you are able to reach the Bastion, you can access your Kubernetes cluster. First, you get the context for your Kubernetes cluster and then you can access you know, the Kubernetes master. The second option is what we call as IAP with SSH tunneling through the Bastion host. In this scenario, what we will do is we will uh, set up a tunnel uh, to the Bastion host and we would set up local forwarding to access the master. So if you look at what we are doing, we are doing an SSH to Bastion and doing a local forwarding of the local forwarding port to the master IP, which is you know the private IP address that we have set up here. Uh, in terms of how the workflow would look like, the kubectl would access the local host at 8443, which would get tunneled to the bastion, and the bastion would send it out on you know port 443 back to the master. And because your kubectl is accessing the local host at 8443, we need to make some changes in terms of we have to create a custom cube context the way that I have you know kind of mentioned here and modify your etsy host to reflect that particular you know Kubernetes local host and then you can use the you know specific context that you have defined to access your Kubernetes master too and the third option which is I the one that I would suggest from best practice perspective is basically rather than you know tunneling the request directly through the bastion we set up a proxy in the bastion and access the uh, you know bastion using an http proxy so that if you look at the way we have set up the ssh here we are doing the same thing you know to access the bastion but we have set up a local forwarding to get terminated into uh, the bastion itself which gets forwarded using the proxy that we have installed here. In this case, I've used something called as a tiny proxy, and you can use any proxy that you can, you know, use. And the last step is, you know, you're accessing your master 
using the HTTP proxy. So here I have my DCP console. I have three clusters. And the first cluster is set up in the highly restricted mode. Uh, so if you look here, the endpoint for the master is the private address. And uh, we have the pods and the services also in the private space. And if you look at the VM instances, uh, I have I don't have any public IP address associated with these instances. Now, if we look at the cluster type P2, so in this particular scenario, you can see that the endpoint has a public IP address in addition to having you know the master IP in the master IP address range. In addition to that, we can see that there's an authorized network that I set up which allows me to access this from my home network. Now the third cluster type, which is the, you know, the most, I would say the unrestricted mode. In this case, you have an endpoint and I have uh, set the authorized network disabled, which means any, uh, you know, machine that has, you know, connectivity to this node will be able to access it. Now let's see all the three types of actors in action. The first one I'm going to do is access to the Bastion host. Uh, let me set up a few of my environment variables and let me try to access my uh, Bastion now. Now this basically is going to uh, tunnel uh, to my Bastion host and establish the connectivity. So here I have uh, logged into my Bastion private host. I can see that I have access to my uh, P1 cluster. I've already set it up. Uh, now if I look at my Qcuttle cluster info, I will be able to access my uh, private cluster. So this is the option one. With the option two, where I am basically uh, accessing my cluster using the tunnel. Uh, so here, uh, you know, I'm establishing the tunnel uh, to access my, uh, you know, FFH. And through the tunnel, I'm able to access my master. So let me also show, I've already modified my Etsy host and my Kubernetes con configuration context. So let me show that context. So here, if you can look at it, I have set up my Kubernetes context to access my Kubernetes default. And if I look at my Etsy host, I have mapped my local host to the Kubernetes default. So once I have done that, I will be able to access my cluster information, the master access using my local Kubernetes context. And as we can see, we are able to access uh, you know, the Kubernetes default. And this is what is mapped to uh, the private master. So, uh, the last option, which is accessing your master using the HTTP proxy. First thing we'll do is uh, set up the tunnel. Uh, in this case, we are tunneling to the local host. And uh, this would go to the bastion where we've already set up the proxy. So let's look at the bastion here. So if I look at, uh, I've already installed the tiny proxy HTTP uh, proxy here so this is running uh, now the only thing we have to do after this is access your master using the http proxy and to do that uh, all we need to do is set up the http proxy environment variable to the port 8888 which would get tunnel uh, go to the bastion and from there it will go to the kubernetes master and you can see that the access is successful uh, thank you for watching